Hey everyone, in this video we're going to go into sinus tachycardia, which is one of the sinus rhythms. Welcome to CAS RN, where I teach you about all things nursing. We are going to talk about the causes of sinus tachycardia, what your assessment should look like, interventions that need to be done, and then we'll go through and practice. So this is just like the normal sinus rhythm in that the EKG itself, the PQRST, is going to look normal, but it's going to be more frequent but it, and faster. So a normal sinus rhythm is between 60 and 100 beats per minute. In sinus tachycardia, your beats are going to be greater than 100 beats per minute. Some of the causes of this are anemia and anxiety, drugs or stimulants like caffeine, nicotine, or illegal drugs, hypotension, hypoxia, illness, myocardial infarction, pulmonary embolism, or drug withdrawal. So this is not a complete list of all the causes of sinus tachycardia, but it does give you an idea of what you need to be looking for. It's also important to know what cardiac output it is. Cardiac output is a measurement of the heart rate multiplied by the stroke volume. And stroke volume is how much blood is pumped through the heart every time it beats. And then we're going to measure that over one minute. So this is typically measured in liters. And a normal output is going to be between 4 and 8 liters every minute. So you can see that there is a lot of blood that's going through your heart every minute. When you look at a 2 liter bottle of soda, you'd have between 2 and 4 of those that are going through your heart every minute. That's almost faster than when you could pour it out into the sink. So... When you have an abnormal pattern, that cardiac output is going to be affected and your patient is going to experience signs and symptoms that are correlated with that decrease in oxygen that the body needs. So some patients may not have any symptoms. It's very common for a patient to be asymptomatic. Though, depending on the underlying cause, they may experience palpitations, dyspnea, chest pain, dizziness or lightheadedness, or syncope. So what you need to make sure that you're doing as the nurse is to do a thorough assessment and get any related medical history. The questions to ask might be if they were doing any physical activity before onset and what it was, if they were exercising or if they've been sick, any recent medications that they've taken or any changes to those medications, any possible exposure to to toxic substances or drugs or stimulants in some way or another, if, they're, if this is happening right after they're drinking a cup of coffee, and then their medical history, such as heart disease, any recent surgery, or any pertinent family history. Some basic interventions that can be done are vagal maneuvers, beta blockers, oxygen, and electrolytes. So vagal maneuvers is when you increase the thoracic pressure and it stimulates the vagal nerve, which then, then can slow down the heart. Um, I ran in an ambulance for seven years, and we did see this where patients were on the toilet, and they were using a lot of internal pressure to have a bowel movement, and it will make them pass out because their heart will slow down, their brain's not getting the oxygen that it needs, or sometimes they actually even pass away from that happening as well. So that vagal maneuver, you just kind of act like you're bearing down as though you needed to pass a bowel movement. And you can teach your patients how to do that. Beta blockers, obviously medication. Oxygen is really easy to give to people. And then electrolytes would be given via IV. But let's look at some of the other causes so that we can look what we would need to do based on that underlying cause. So if a patient is anemic, we're going to give them a blood transfusion and IV fluids. If the, it's caused by anxiety, we might need to look at long-term anxiety medications for that patient. If it's caused by drugs or stimulants, then we're going to want to look at discontinuing that those um, influences. If we've got hypotension, then we're going to want to give IV fluids and possibly a vasopressor, which is a medication that causes vascular constriction. Then we've got hypoxia, which is to administer oxygen, obviously. Illness, we might just need to treat the symptoms. With an MI or myocardial infarction, the list for treatment of an MI is really long and we're not going to get into looking at all of that. But basically, we're going to want to get rid of the clot and restore normal blood flow. And it's the same thing for a pulmonary embolism is that we've got a clot. We need to restore that normal blood flow. 
then if a patient is experiencing some sort of withdrawal, like if they decided to stop a medication or illicit drugs or alcohol, just cold turkey, there's a lot of medical implications to removing that substance from the human body. And each facility will have a recommended protocol for helping that patient with those withdrawals and dependency, but it usually involves a cocktail of medications, vitamins, and minerals for a few days. So this is why your nursing assessment is so important. You need to know the underlying cause before you can actually treat the long-term symptoms. Then some nursing interventions that you're going to look at. Of course, we've talked about this assessment, really important, but we want to make sure we're also getting their level of consciousness. We're checking their pulses. We're checking their vitals, specifically the ones that are going to be related to this, which are heart rate and blood pressure. We might be giving some medications. We want to look at IV access. We want to make sure we've got a 12 lead going on. And then once everything is done and settled and your patient's in a place where they can understand education, you're going to want to go in, make sure they understand any new medications that are coming into them, understand the signs and symptoms of their condition, and then when it would be appropriate for them to contact their provider or call 911. So let's go ahead and go through and practice. So when you know what normal sinus rhythm looks like, you can look at this EKG and go, wow, that's really fast heart rate, right? So we look at the sick versus not sick. Something's wrong. And then that alerts you and helps you understand, hey, I need to do something here. So we want to make sure that we have a six second strip. So in doing that, we want to make sure we're going to count five boxes, which equals one second. So we've got one, two, three, four four, five. One, two, three, 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 four. And then there's a fifth one out here. Okay. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six seconds. Now we're going to start off by counting our rate. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Our patient is having 15 beats in 6 seconds. We're going to multiply that by 10, and that is going to give us 150. So we're going to say, okay, this is really fast, so our patient is tacky. Then we're going to make sure our rhythm is equal. So we're going to look at in between these. Again, each one of these big squares equals five. So we can just do five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we've got nine going on there. We'll come back over here. We'll go five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we've got nine going on again there. We've got five, six, seven, eight, nine. We've got nine going on there. Okay, so we are regular on our rhythm. Our QRS complex should be less than or equal to 0.12. So we're going to come over here. We're going to count that. We're going to go 1, 2, 3. We've got 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. So we've got that going on here. So we've got 3 multiplied by 0.04 is going to give us 0.12. So that is normal. Then we're going to do our PR interval. So here's our P. We've got one, two, three, right here. We've got one, two, three, one, two, three. Again, we've got three, so we're gonna do the same thing. Three times 0.04 is gonna give us 0.12, so that also falls in the normal range. And then we also wanna make sure our ratios are proper. We've got a P, Q, R, S, T, P, Q, R, S, T, P, Q, R, S, T, right? So that's normal too. So the only thing that we are concerned about is looking that our rate is really high. So this is a normal sinus rhythm with an increased heart rate. But what we call that is tachycardia. All right, so remember that there's multiple causes for tachycardia, sinus tachycardia. Your assessment is gonna ultimately drive the interventions that you do, and the more you practice, the more you're gonna understand. And always make sure that you know what normal looks like, because when you know what normal looks like, it makes it a lot easier to recognize when it's abnormal. Thanks for tuning in. Please help me grow my channel by clicking subscribe and follow below. 